Hello everyone. Welcome to the Davenport Library's Visible Mending program. Over the next eight weeks, we'll talk about visible mending and practice some of the visible mending techniques. All of these mending methods are use simple stitches, basic tools, and scrap fabric. You can use what you have on hand. We'll create two small samplers using these techniques. These small samplers can be sewn into a drawstring bag in the final episode. The drawstring bag is completely optional. You can practice your stitching on any size of fabric that you wish. Here are some examples of what we'll be covering. Felt patches, borrow patching, weaving, sashiko stitching, applique, and reverse applique. And here's the small drawstring bag. A limited number of kits are available. These kits contain some of the materials needed for this program, but you will still need to provide some fabric, mostly scraps, and some basic sewing tools, such as scissors. You do not need a kit in order to participate in this workshop. You may already have a lot of these materials on hand or be able to find them locally pretty easily. I'll discuss more about materials in the next section. Episodes will be saved to YouTube so that you can refer back to them at any time and work at your own pace. Let's take a minute and talk about visible mending and what it is. So what exactly is visible mending? Well, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Instead of throwing away your jeans when the knee is torn, you fix it, allowing the patch and stitches to show, which creates a repair that is both practical and beautiful. Recent movements in minimalism and sustainability have helped fuel a renewed interest in mending, something that was once practiced by necessity and is now recognized as a craft. But why do visible mending? I mean, you can go buy a new pair of jeans if you'd like, anytime. Well, it helps reduce waste by buying less, which also saves you money. It keeps clothes out of the landfills, a shockingly high 85% of textiles end up in the dump each year. It saves water. It takes 1,800 gallons of water to produce one pair of jeans. That includes growing the cotton. It provides you with a creative outlet and allows you to show your individuality. You're not just wearing cookie cutter jeans, you're wearing something unique to you. It builds skills and independence and confidence. It makes you part of a community of crafters, both past and present. These traditions have been handed down for hundreds of years and they're still useful today. And quite frankly, it's fun. It's relaxing and it's stress reducing. And who among us couldn't use some of that? Let's talk about the materials we're going to be using. Um, a lot of these you probably already have at home, especially if you're a crafter, and the rest are pretty basic and easy to source. So let's start out. These are fabric shears. You're probably going to need those. Um, some thread snips you're going to be using quite a bit. Some ordinary sewing thread. You don't need very much, and it doesn't matter what color. You're going to need some marking tools um, for your darker fabrics. You're going to need something white. It's usually a chalk marker of some sort. Um, here's a couple examples. Uh, this one is a water-soluble chalk pencil. This is another uh, automatic chalk pencil. Works pretty well. Um, also, if you're a sewer, you might have something called Taylor's chalk. Something like that works perfectly. For lighter colored fabrics, you're going to want um, something else. Chalk isn't going to work. So I recommend these Frixome pins. Um, they're available in the uh, office supply section of just about any regular store. Um, they're marketed as erasable pens, uh, which they are, but they also are heat sensitive. So when you apply like an iron or a hairdryer to the piece, the lines will disappear. So these come in really handy. Um, quilters use them a lot. Embroiderers do too. 
You can also use an ordinary pen or pencil for marking. Just remember that those aren't removable, so you'll want to be sure and cover your marks with your embroidery stitches or your um, applique stitches. Other thread that you'll need is embroidery floss. Um, if you used to make or know somebody that used to make friendship bracelets, you're going to be very familiar with this. And of course, embroiderers uh, use it a great deal. Um, this is DMC embroidery floss, which is a six strand floss. Um, we'll talk more about how to separate those and what how many strands to use. Uh, DMC is kind of the standard uh, embroidery floss. There are other brands available around here, but DMC floss is reasonably priced and uh, very easy to find at the craft and fabric stores. You'll need a couple colors, whatever you like. Uh, this is Sashiko thread. It is single strand as opposed to the floss. It is 100% cotton and it's been created and designed to use in mending. Uh, so it's very strong. If you're going to do a lot of visible mending, I recommend that you invest in some uh, sashiko thread. It's not that expensive, but it's a little hard to find around here. As far as I can tell, the local craft stores don't have it. Um, I do have a couple sources that you could order from. Now, the tradition is white thread on dark fabric, like this blue fabric here. But, or you'll often see uh, blue thread on white fabric. But in this modern age, uh, things have changed quite a bit. And now you can get sashiko thread in all different colors. You can get variegated thread. You can find um, hand dyed thread, kind of luxury thread. Uh, the sky's kind of the limit uh, these days with uh, crafting. And the tradition, of course, is to use dark blue fabric. Uh, but again, that's not absolutely necessary anymore. Uh, people are using all kinds of colors, and it's uh, they're all really beautiful. Now, if you can't get a hold of sashiko thread and you prefer not to order any, an alter a very good alternative is to use pearl cotton. Um, pearl cotton is very easily available locally in any of the craft and fabric stores. Um, and it comes in a wide variety of colors and variegations and so forth. Now this is uh, number eight. You'll see there's a number on it, on the uh, little cakes or cones of, of thread. Um, number eight is about the same weight and size as this thread. You can also use number five, which is a little bit thicker, but also well within range of what um, sashiko thread is. Um, sashiko thread, different brands, different styles come in different thicknesses. So uh, number five or number eight uh, pearl cotton works just fine. Um, the Just remember, the larger the number, like this is number eight, the finer the thread. So number five is a little bit thicker and number eight is a little bit thinner. Okay, continuing with the sashiko, uh, you'll need some uh, dark blue fabric. Uh, now it doesn't have to be blue, it can be just about any color. Make sure it's high contrast with whatever thread you use. Like I said, it's traditional for white thread on navy blue. Uh, I suggest also that you use a cotton or a cotton le uh, linen fabric. Uh, these are just little four by four squares and we're going to practice some of the this is the sashiko stitching that we're going to practice i think this one's called ocean waves and then here's another one i think this one's called feathered arrow and i'll show you how to mark the uh, your fabric and then how to stitch them uh, now this is a cotton linen blend it's a pretty traditional fabric that's used but uh, something as simple as uh, quilting cotton that you can get at the fabric stores will work just fine. And they have small pieces that you can buy. You don't have to buy a whole yard or even half a yard. You just need a, a small amount. You'll also need some uh, scraps and patches of, of material. Um, these are just bits and pieces that I've uh, picked up. You'll see most of, most of them are like a traditional blue or cambry. This is slightly thicker and this is quite thin. Any of these will work. They don't have to be any particular size. We're going to, with the burrow, which is this part, we're gonna use a variety of fabrics um, and then stitch them on top of each other. 
So pick up a variety. Uh, you, you're not going to need this many. You're just going to need a few. You'll also need a couple pieces of felt, and they don't need to be big pieces, just little little scraps will be fine. This is for making our felt patches, like this one. And this is quite, this is one of the larger patches, um, so you can easily get, you know, one patch out of this small piece. Uh, the smaller ones, you could get two or three patches out of those. You'll need a little bit of scrap fabric for backing your reversible um, applique, which is this. So it, it, in this bag, I used um, all the same kind of fabric. You could mix it up and try different kinds of fabrics. And I also chose a solid uh, to make it more graphic and show up a little more. I think I'm just going to use some plain, this is just some muslin fab, uh, pad scraps that I had. Um, you'll also need just a little bit of material to make an applique, uh, depending on how big of an applique you want to make. And some of those patches that I had earlier would work just fine for that. So I would stick with cotton or cotton linen fabrics are the easiest to work with. If you're going to make the drawstring bag, you're going to need some larger, uh, a couple extra things. Now to work your different uh, mending techniques on, uh, you can use any kind of fabric or any any size of fabric you want to. Again, cotton, cotton linen are the best. Um, I cut two pieces that are 10 by 10. And that's, so this is the front side, one side, and here's another side for the bag. So I did some of my practice on one piece and the rest on an, the other piece. And then I also have two 10 by 10 pieces of uh, real lightweight muslin. And that's what I'm going to use for the for the lining for this. Now, you can use uh, you can use a a pattern piece and for the lining, um, muslin is very lightweight and quite inexpensive, um, so that uh, it's easy to source at the local um, stores. This is uh, also a linen cotton uh, blend. It's called Essex. Um, I do not believe it's available locally. Uh, most of the online uh, quilt store, uh, quilting stores or fabric stores will have it. it. Comes in a wide variety of colors. It's um, it's sturdy like quilting cotton, but it's soft and um, works real well for stitching on. And that, like I said, the muslin is for the lining. Now that's if you want to do the drawstring bag for the lining, you don't absolutely have to. And then I also have. Uh, you'll also need a couple of pieces for the drawstring um, channel here. You'll need one for each side. These are the length, the width of the bag when you first cut them. So it was 10 inches across and two inches deep. And then um, comes out like this when you fold it up. And then you'll also need a couple uh, pieces of cord. This is just ribbon I had laying around. You could use macrame cording if you had that, some uh, strong cotton twine, um, a ribbon like this. You could use long shoelaces if you had that. That needs to be, for this size bag, it needs to be about 24, 26 inches long, two of those. Now again, you don't have to do that. You can do smaller or larger, um, up to you, to your creative um, project and you can do how, whatever you feel like doing. Okay, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the kits and what's in them. Uh, the kits do not give you everything that you need for the project. You're still gonna to need to source some fabric, for instance, for your background, for your sampler or drawstring, uh, the cording for the drawstring bag if you decide to go that way. Of course, um, basic tools like scissors you're going to need to uh, supply whether you get the kit. So let me dump this out. Be careful when you reach in. I know from experience that there's a lot of sharp objects in here, like pins and needles. So you'll find a small packet here of different items. Uh, this is Taylor's chalk that will work for marking dark fabric. Here is a skein of Sashiko th uh, thread. Uh, that will be in episode three and four, and I'll show you a really cool way to um, organize and keep your thread, your sashiko 
thread from tangling when we get there. Um, there'll be a couple random uh, skeins of DMC floss. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to the colors. If you don't like the colors, or if you have colors of floss already on hand, uh, go ahead and use those, that's fine. Uh, there'll be a small little uh, felt here of needles. There's a real long one, and that's the sashiko needle, and it has a larger eye, and it's quite long. There's a reason for that. And then there'll be an embroidery needle. Now, I think of needles as very uh, personal to the individual. Uh, if you like a longer or a shorter embroidery needle, or one with a larger or smaller eye, I think every individual has their own preferences. Um, so if this one isn't, uh, you're not happy with this one, you might want to try a different size or a different length of needle. There'll also be a small um, collection of patches, uh, random fabrics, colors. You're not obligated to use these. You don't need to use all of them. Uh, this one has a print on one side. If you don't like the print, you can always use the back side. So that would be to get you started on the boro patching. Uh, be, feel free to add your own or add extra. There'll be a couple pieces of about four by four felt. Again, the colors are random, uh, different colors in each kit. If you don't like the colors or um, you have some of your own, be, that's fine. Go ahead and use your own. Uh, felt, uh, they come in rectangle sizes, are pretty inexpensive. Uh, and they are available at the local craft and uh, fabric stores. So use these as practice, maybe. And if you really uh, find it fun and interesting, you want to try more, uh, the material is pretty easy to find. And then finally in the kit, there will be two of these uh, four by four pieces of uh, dark navy thread that we'll be using for the sashiko patches. Now, of course, the tools and other th uh, items that I talked about earlier, you'll have to provide yourself. Some other things that you might want to have on hand that will you'll find useful are things like um, as iron. Uh, not absolutely necessary, but in a couple of places it's uh, kind of handy to have one. Uh, a sewing machine, if you're making the drawstring bag, uh, makes the sewing together real quick. But if you don't have a sewing machine, don't panic. It's also a small enough project you can hand sew it, which is what I plan to do. I'm going to put a list of all of these materials uh, in the notes below this video. If you get a kit, we have a limited supply of these kits. Um, you can uh, register. You don't really have to register for the workshop, but you can register for a kit. And um, you will do that at Davenport Library in our events calendar. There'll be a, a button there that you can click and add your name and where you want to pick it up at. And we'll have it either, um, we'll have it ready for you at either Eastern or at Fairmont. Um, and like I said, a lot of this you might already have at home. The kit is not a requirement to follow along with these videos. Um, I hope you at least try some of these things if you, with uh, whatever material you have on hand. I have a stack of books to recommend today, all of which are related to visible mending and why we do it. These first two have to do with the fashion industry. The first one is called Overdressed, The Shockingly High Cost of Cheap Fashion by Elizabeth Klein. And the next one is called Fashionopolis, The Price of Fast Fashion and the Future of Clothes by Dana Thomas. If you would like to learn more about creating the perfect wardrobe for you and your lifestyle, try these two. The first one is called The Curated Closet, A Simple System for Discovering Your Personal Style and Building Your Dream Wardrobe by Anuska Rees. And the second one is called Project 333, The Minimalist Fashion Challenge That Proves Less Really Is So Much More by Courtney Carver. Next, I'm going to talk about some books that cover hand sewing techniques. Uh, this first one is called The Geometry of Hand Sewing by Natalie Channon. She is the founder and director of Alabama Channon, which is a group that is well known for their um, hand stitched and hand embroidered clothing. Uh, we're not actually going to do any projects from this book, but I wanted to show it to you because it shows how very simple stitches can make a huge impact. Uh, Alabama Channon is especially well known for their applique, like on this piece of clothing. 
And in this one, they added some beading. Now we're not going to do any beading, but I wanted to show it to you because it shows how very simple stitches, visible stitches, add to the design and beauty of this piece of clothing. Here are two books of techniques that we will be exploring in future episodes. Uh, the first one is called The Book of Boro, a techniques and patterns inspired by traditional Japanese textiles, written by Susan Briscoe. And then Simply Sashiko, classic Japanese embroidery made easy by Nahon Vo. Uh, this first one has a real good history of Boro, as well as different projects you can work on. And this one has real extensive information on how to stitch Sashiko, as well as full-size templates. Next are some books on mending. Uh, this first one is called Joyful Mending, Visible Repairs for the Perfectly Imperfect Things We Love, written by Noriko Masumi. This one uh, focuses a little bit more on knitwear, such as sweaters and socks. Then I have Make and Mend, Sashiko-inspired embroidery projects to customize and repair textiles and decorate your home written by Jessica Marquez. Uh, this has great templates in it and a bunch of projects that are, look really fun to do. Uh, she is on Instagram and is well worth following because she has a lot of inspirational projects there too. And her handle on Instagram is at miniature rhino. Next I have Mendy Matters, a slow fashion guide for a well-loved wardrobe written by Katrina Rodabau. Uh, she's also on Instagram and is well worth following. She has lots of great ideas there too that she posts. And her handle is the same as her name at Katrina Rodabau. Uh, Katrina concentrates mostly on denim. Um, as you can see, uh, high contrast. Uh, she's elevated almost to an art form, creating clothes that are unique and individual as well as practical. And finally, we have visible mending. Repair, Renew, Reuse, The Clothes You Love by Arona Konaraj. Uh, this is the book that I got a lot of the ideas for the different projects we'll be working on over the next few weeks. Uh, Arona is amazing. She's an artist and a craftsperson. She's brilliant at taking older techniques and ideas and reinterpreting them for the modern world. She also has a book on punch, uh, punch needle technique that is very popular that we also own. Um, and she also has a great Instagram. Her Instagram handle is at Bookhow, B-O-O-K-H-O-U. Uh, she posts lots of ideas and projects there as well. So we'll be using this book kind of as our inspiration for the next few weeks. This book and all the others that I mentioned are owned by the Davenport Library. And I will list all the information about them, the authors and titles so that you can get some reserves in and pick them up if you're interested in any one subject in particular. Um, I also list the Instagram handles of the three authors that I mentioned because I think they're fun to look at and I think you might find them inspirational as well. Mm -hmm.